All right, our objective for today is I will be able to calculate the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. Make sure you are taking good notes because you are going to be, you are going to be asked to upload them to Canvas. All right, so you may use the Desmos calculator on your Canvas page. You are only allowed to use the Desmos calculator. You should not be using um, your phone calculator or the calculator on your computer, I want you to only use the Desmos calculator for Pythagorean theorem. So if you go to your home page on Canvas, um, it'll be under eLearning. It's Pythagorean theorem, Desmos calculator. Click on it, open it in a new window, and then you're going to split your screen between this and the video that you are watching right now so that you can work on your calculator while the video is playing. All right, so make sure you are also taking notes, all right? We need to take really good notes because um, I'm gonna have you upload them at the end of class or at the end of the video. So right triangles, the longest side of a right triangle is the hypotenuse. So right now you should be drawing this triangle. You should be writing down everything on the screen along with the diagram. All right, so hypotenuse is the longest side of the right triangle. Um, it, the right angle always points to the hypotenuse. So even if my triangle was in a different position, okay, that's my right angle, it's pointing to the hypotenuse. The other two sides are legs, side A and side B. It does not matter which is A, which is B, as long as the legs are side A and side B. So Pythagoras developed a formula for finding the light of any of the sides of any right triangle. And the formula is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Here are all the steps for solving the Pythagorean theorem that I want you to write down. These are going to be really useful for the next few days in class. Um, so step one is write the formula. Step two is substitute A and B into the formula. Step three is show what a squared, what a squared and b squared are after simplifying. Show undoing the squared by putting the square root symbol on both sides and then getting the correct answer. So all of that might not make sense right now, but we're going to do a few examples that we do all of that in. Um, so keep those notes with you. All right, so my thinking. I have a triangle. All right, I have um, two legs and I have a hypotenuse, all right? So I know that the hypotenuse is missing because that's the longest side. It's directly across from the right angle, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label my triangle. I'm gonna label this A, I'm gonna label this side B, and I'm gonna label this side C because the hypotenuse is always C. So every time that we're solving for something today, we're solving for C. Next, I'm going to write my formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Then I'm going to substitute my numbers in. So A is 6, so 6 squared plus B, which is 8. 8 squared equals C squared. So I don't know C. Then I'm going to follow step 3, and that is simplify my squareds. So 6 squared is 36, plus 8 squared is 64, equals C squared. If you don't know how to do those, you go over to the, the calculator over here, and you would type in like 8 squared. All right. All right, it's an A symbol with a 2 above it. All right, so now I'm going to add 36 plus 64 is 100 equals C squared. Then I gotta get rid of that square root and I gotta think about what is the opposite of a square root. And I should be able to hear that the word square is in there, all right? So, sorry, what's the opposite of squaring? Not what's the opposite of square root. So the opposite of, a squ of squaring is a square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And if you remember, the square root means that you find two numbers, or one number that can multiply 
to itself to get the number under the square root. So if I think about it, the square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. So 100, I mean, sorry, 10 equals C. A couple ways to make sure you know that that is the hypotenuse. Um, it will be the longest side. 10 is longer than 6 and 8, but it will not be longer than the sides added. So if I add 6 plus 8, that gives me 14, and 10 is smaller than 14, so I probably did the process correctly. All right, next problem. So again, I'm going to label my sides. So A, B, C. Again, missing the C. I'm gonna write the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Then I'm gonna substitute in my numbers into the formula. Nine squared plus 10 squared equals C squared. Then I'm going to use the formula. Nine squared is 81 plus 10 squared is 100 equals C squared. I'm going to add together 181 equals C squared. And then the last step, which is the hardest to remember, is take the square root because the square root is the opposite of squaring. So we always do inverse operations when we are solving. So that's why we take the square root. Then I would type it into my calculator over here. And you are going to get the square root of 181, which is 3.66791821. I'm okay if you round to the nearest tenth, so one decimal place. So that would turn into 3. Point, um, six, oh my, three point seven equals C. So my hypotenuse is three point seven. I did something wrong because that doesn't actually make sense. Oh, that's because I did the square root of the square root of one eighty one. My bad. The square root of 181 is actually 13.45, which turns into 13.5. I knew that was wrong because 3.7 or whatever I had is not bigger than 10, and it is not bigger than 9. So I knew that was wrong. 13.5 is looks better because it's bigger than both 10 or 9. And 10 plus 9 is going to be 19, which is bigger than 13.5. All right, last problem that I want you to try, and then I want you to come back with the video. So pause it and try it. All right, so for C, you should have gotten 13, all right, because um, 144 times t plus 25 is 169, and the square root of 169 is 13. Um, all right, all you need to do is upload those notes that you just took to Canvas under the e-learning assignment. And then you need to go to R.1 on 8th grade IXL until a smart score of 80. Only use your Desmos calculator, please. Um, if you have any questions, don't remember your password, username, anything, email me. I will be on the computer all day. Thank you.